Hello, this is Villets. I'm going to try to do a really quick tutorial on the basics of Unreal Engine. So we will go ahead and open this up. We'll go over the interface, uh, brushes and how to block out stuff, lights, materials, and the material editor, as well as material instances, and then a brief overview of what blueprints are. So once you open up the project, you'll see the browser, these are past projects you have. We'll go ahead and make a new one using the first person template and we'll click next. Um, let me see, we can choose these different options here. Starter content is just some very basic shapes and props and materials to use for your starting project. And then you can choose from Blueprint or C++. Blueprint is probably the way to go for you know, the beginning. You can always change to C++ later. And what Blueprints are, uh, more or less just a visual way to link objects and commands and logic to make them do what you want. Uh, they are a visual way to do C++ in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that, uh, and I'm not really sure what all that stuff is because I'm still pretty new to this as well. So we will leave this as the default name and just go ahead and create this. Wait for it to load up a little bit. Okay, so you open this up and you will see my extremely upscaled interface. Uh, I don't work at this resolution. I just have upscaled everything to make it easier for you guys to see. So here is the 3D viewport, which lets you see your current scene or level that you're editing. You can navigate by holding down the right mouse button. Which you do this. The left mouse button lets you kind of, uh, I'm not sure, like walk around your level. You can also use the Q and E keys to move up and down. Uh, going back to the right mouse button, if you hold that down, the W, S, A, and D keys let you move around just like you're in an airplane or in a first-person shooter, and the Q and E keys let you move up and down. Something else to note is that over here you have the camera speed, which allows you to obviously move faster. There's also this scalar slider, which allows you to move ridiculously fast or ridiculously slow. We'll go ahead and set this back down to default. And crap. Okay, if you select something, you can <laughs> hit the F key to center on it. And that helps in that scenario, as you just saw, but also if you just want to fill something in a viewport to edit it, you can do that. Also, uh, the Alt key, hold that down along with the left mouse button to pan around stuff. Over here on the top right, you have the World Outliner. lets you see stuff in your current scene or level. Um, these other tabs, don't worry about those but I have added those from the window drop-down over here. Uh, when you open them up the first time, they'll just be this free-floating window. Interface is really customizable. You can just drag and drop them where you need them to go. Uh, I'm not sure how that happened just there, but we will move this back to here. Oh, also you can drag and drop stuff up here if you want. I'm not sure if this will work the way I want it to. I guess it only works with editor windows, which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but say we select something, we want to see some simple properties of that object. You can see them down here in the details panel. Everything from its location, rotation, scale, to its materials, physics properties, all that good stuff. And each one of these has a drop-down menu right here. Let you see some additional properties. So if you're going through a tutorial and you can't find a certain property, it's probably in here. You can also search for it up here. Really simple easy to use. Uh, there are search uh, search fields in pretty much all of these because Unreal Engine has a lot of different components and things to edit, so this helps a lot. Moving on, um, oh, also the world settings, that's not going to be there by default. I'll cover that in a little bit. Uh, moving on, you have your content browser down here. This is really important because this is where you'll import stuff that you need to add into your level. Uh, this lets you see all of the files that are currently in your project, and if you expand this with this tiny button over here, you will see another little uh, hierarchical browser that lets you easier to you know select stuff, just like you would in Windows Explorer. Uh, we chose to start with starter content, so you can browse through that stuff over here. See the different materials, props. These are really easy to interact with. You just drag and drop right into your scene, and then you can use the W, E, and R keys to change between movement, you know, uh, rotation, and then scale. Set this to how it was. Uh, for materials, you can just drag and drop them onto your object, or you can drag and drop them over here into the material slot. 
over here you'll have this window and I I think it's called the modes panel at least that's what it used to be called there used to be five buttons over here and if you're going through an older tutorial you will see those those have been moved over here to this drop down and now they have a they have a corresponding um, hotkey I'm not going to cover these right now but if you do select one of these you'll see it populate over here with some options for that we'll go back to the uh, select mode uh, these are some very basic elements you can add to your scene for lighting and whatnot. Let's just briefly go through these. Recently placed basic. Um, these objects are like actual polygonal objects. And those are different from the geometry down here because each one of these, they may look the same. Um, this is polygons and this is what's called a BSP. They're also called brushes inside of Unreal Engine for some reason. I'm not sure what that reasoning is behind it, but it's probably from like 1999 or something. Uh, anyways, B BSP stands for Binary Space Partition, and they're, they're an older technique that was used in like, for instance, the first Doom game, to just tell the engine like where stuff was, so that when it, you know, rendered it, it could put textures there. Uh, these are also useful for blocking out basic shapes. So you have your regular polygon thing here. Um, can't really do a whole lot of, aside from you know, like move it around and scale it and stuff like I don't think you can actually edit it let's see yeah you can't because this is a brush editing mode so you can edit brushes so you select a brush you can now select faces and move those around vertexes and you do the same thing with those and get some very you know basic shapes just to block stuff out in your level um, another really handy feature is uh, say I want to make like instead of going in blender and making like a building and then exporting it from blender and then importing it into here and then moving it into the level seeing if it's the right size making notes and then going back over to blender edit the thing re-export it yada 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 um, you can just make very simple blockouts of your objects with these brushes uh, so say for some reason I want to have like a block with a hole in it, you know, and I want it to be the right size. I'm already in my game engine and I can already, you know, play this thing. Oh, sorry, this is going to open up a VR window. Does that for me for some reason. Um, I can already be in the engine. I, okay, okay, say that it's a little bit too tall, so I need to shorten it down. Just hit escape, close out of that, and then go and edit the brush. And I want a hole in it, right? So now I can just add another one of these brushes. This is not going to make a lot of sense right now. You can edit the, uh, the sides and stuff right here. Make it really refined. Just make it something like 50. That's fine. Uh, okay, let's edit the brush editing mode and just go back to this one. So we're not selecting faces. All right, so I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to scale it down. That was too much. That was on the wrong axis. I'm not sure how to... I'm not sure yet if there is a way to... Uh, I guess if you turn off snapping, it would do... like, finer scaling. But you know what? For this purpose, this is fine. Okay, so we got it smaller. I want to go through... just intersect it with this. And then... If you go over here to the details panel, you can change it from an additive to a subtractive brush. And then boom, we got a brand new hole inside of our shape here. You can move this to be you know, more centered or whatever. And then what you can do from here is export your shape that you've made using file, uh, export selected as an FBX, and then you just load that up in a blender, add the fine details, and then you're done. You've already done your sizing and everything you need in the engine. You've already blocked it out. It's a lot quicker than a guesting game with Blender. Um, so that's a really handy feature. Also, if you don't know what you're doing in like a 3D editing program, but you need to show someone like where something needs to be, you can just use these and make a really simple representation of that. And then the artist can uh, you know, export that and modify it in Blender. Really powerful tool. Uh, you can also go over here in the outliner and see additive with a plus sign, and it's a subtractive brush over here with a minus sign. That has disappeared from view because it's subtractive. You can still select it over here. 
Okay, let's go over materials and lights. So, really quickly, materials, drag and drop like before, and you can edit those by double clicking on them, and this will open the material editor. If you've used Blender, you know what this is node based editing, uh, really flexible but yet really simple, lets you do a lot of stuff. You can add nodes by right clicking, switching for them, or selecting them from one of these drop down menus right here. And uh, I'm not going to go into this in here, but you can do a lot of stuff. There are a lot of tutorials out there on how to do that. There's also another kind of material. I'm not going to save this, uh, but do be aware that there is a save button over here, and none of the changes you made here will reflect in your scene until you've actually saved it. Uh, I've just moved some nodes around, so there's no need to save this. Okay, so there is another type of material called a material instance. If you right-click on a material, you can create a material instance, name it whatever you want, and this now has all the same properties of this material here. But if you open it in the editor, you'll see you no longer have those nodes. You just have this really simple interface, which is just a few key things that you can edit over here. Uh, that's because we have not yet set up the original material for material instancing. So we'll minimize this. Let's go ahead and open up the original uh, material that we made that instance from. You'll still see over here there's like a tab. We still had it open for the instance. So this is the material instance and this is the original material. You see the difference in the editors right there. Now to be able to fully use material instances you need to turn a value into a parameter by right clicking on it and converting it to a parameter. We'll just call it param. You see this defines the roughness so uh, we'll call it param rough. And then we'll save that. Okay. Oh, also when you click when you click these, you can see the editable properties over here and it also has the corresponding inputs uh, right here, but you could just edit them by hand if nothing's plugged in that way. So now if we save this and then go over to the instance that we created, we'll see that that parameter is now over here. That's what parameters do, is they allow them to show up uh, in the instance that you've made. So say I have this material that an artist has created, but I need to make some tweaks to it. But I don't want it to be an entirely different material because I'm going to apply it to something else than what it was originally intended for. I could just make an instance with the key features I want to be able to edit and then just go over, come over here and edit them. Or also, if you have a really complex material, uh, for instance, the let me see, like this this one with parallax should be pretty complex. Yeah, look at this mess. Oh my god. Like, unless you're a god with nodes, you're not going to be able to decipher all of this. So what you can do is find a few key values that you need to be able to edit, and you can convert those to parameters, name them whatever you want, I'm just going to call this donkey so we can see it. It's a really random name. Um, and then we'll save this. Just let it save. It's really big material. And then we will create a instance from that. And the exact same thing will happen. We should see donkey over here that we can edit. They've already had this set up, it looks like, for material instancing. Uh, which is really neat because now you can just swap these out instead of messing with the spaghetti mess of nodes. So that is materials and material instances. Uh, let's quickly go over blueprints. I am not an expert on these by any means, but I kind of know what they are, and I can kind of explain them. So if we click on this mess of stuff right here, we'll see that oh, all these are selected because they're all part of the same blueprint. Um, blueprint is it's, it's kind of a weird name for what this is, but if you think about it, like an architect needs a blueprint to create like an office building and have all the features and functionality that that office building needs, like elevators that have buttons that when you push them, they go up and down and all that stuff. So a blueprint, it does the same thing. Um, it takes all the things that you need. Let's open up this blueprint first uh, so I can show you better what I'm talking about. So if you select this, you can come over here and click this to edit the blueprint. So this is, this is the blueprint. Uh, this is all the things that this element needs to do what it needs to do. And since this is a pretty important one, this is the first person character one, it has all the inputs, all the logic that tells the gun when to fire. It also, um, since this little uh, example map is set up for VR and regular keyboard mouse input, uh, you'll see there are two weapons here. If we zoom in. 
this has logic that tells the game like, oh, if we're using VR, then you'll, you're going to use this gun down here and the properties associated with that. But if you're just using mouse and keyboard, go ahead and delete that, and we're just going to be using this one. We don't need, you know, this one down here, and that's all like up here in this box. So bl blueprints are really flexible, and they do a lot of stuff. So it's hard to just explain what they are. Uh, they, they contain logic, they contain objects, and they link all those objects with logic and inputs and particle emitters to do the things that you need them to do in your game. So that is what a blueprint is. Over here we can see all the things that make up this specific blueprint. Um, and then in here you can see the logic nodes that make that blueprint do what it needs to do. You can convert this, I'm not sure how, uh, into regular C++ code. And then you can, I don't know if it, it works the other way around. I'm not sure if you can convert C++ code into uh, the node-based system, but I know at a certain point they are sort of interchangeable. So if you make your project as a, a blueprint project, if you recall in the beginning we had the option between blueprint and C++, if you make an object as a blueprint, I know you can convert it to a C++, um, like a blueprint to a, some C++ code, but I'm not sure if it works the other way around. Anyways, that is what blueprints are. And let me see, I think I've gone over everything that I plan to go on over in here. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. And in the next video or two, I will go over some other things, um, especially these, no these modes and how to make landscapes, how to actually add in lights and lighting and uh, how those interact and how they work with large scale landscapes. So thanks for watching.